high greedy 3Ds. The guys at Uniformation, who we all know and love for making the GK2 and 3 Ultra, have sent me some of their very own resin to play with. This is the biodegradable resin. This is the plant-based resin, the X13 resin. And we're going to be having a little bit of a play with this today. And I'm going to be printing a bit of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'll show you how I got on with this and we'll look at some print settings. Stay tuned. So here is the Uniformation website and here is the X13 Grey at a very reasonable $24.99 which I don't think is a bad price for resin at all. And we're going to be using that today in their video and a printer, the AG gate to well, here it is i'm going to give it a really good shake first before i pour it in now what i've noticed with the thickness of this it's like thick milk it's not thick it's not thin it's like milk that's had a good old shake maybe a milkshake perhaps no real discernible smell to it now i'm going to be using a couple of tests the frozen xp test and also the cones of calibration and these are the settings that i'm going to use 0.05 millimeter height 20 bottom layers at an exposure time of 20 seconds and then three seconds exposure time each layer that is the recommended levels that i found on tinter webinet and i'm just going to pop it across onto my gk2 give it a print and have a look at that. So two separate tests running side by side to give us a really good indication of what the exposure should be. Let's leave that to do its thing. And here it is all done and dusted. Uh, coming off the bill plate here. Yep, nice and easy. Always a good test. Did the XP frozen test break? No, it didn't. That's another good test. Now you can see just by looking at it before you cleaned it up that these are going to be good. The counter calibration looks very, very nice. And the other thing I always think with a resin, is it any good, is how well does the build plate clean up? And it cleans up really, really well. Now I'm going to use a little bit of IPA to clean this up and I've just popped it on a, uh, a little toothbrush there to swirl it around and clean it up and I'm giving them both a really good clean before we have a jolly old look at them and of course don't forget to cure them here we're doing it in the Hay Gears uh, Ultracraft Reflex Curing Station having about five minutes each. And there we go, a little bit of a close-up look now. Now, yes, I know the Kona calibration is broken on the plus side there, but that's probably my heavy-handedness. This is pretty much a darn perfect print. And if we look at the XP test, yep, again, pretty darn good. If we're going to be picky, and we can be picky, I guess, it's a tiny bit overexposed. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I've got no real dramas with that. So let's give it something to print with a little bit of meat. And I'm going to be using this game body file here. And this is quite a complicated old build. There's lots of uh, nooks and crannies in it to build. There's lots of weak areas and lots of uh, delicate areas and snap offable areas. So this is, the, this is the position I'm going to stick it in. I'm going to use, obviously, the auto supports to support it. And then we can get it into the printer and see how we get on. Now, if it prints this fine and nothing breaks and everything works well, then I think that three second exposure time is going to be just what we're after. But look at that. All done and dusted. The supports are on there. Let's get it in the printer and print it. And look at that. A few hours later, all looks good on the surface. Everything's printed. It's held the build plate well. All the supports are printed perfectly. I've got nothing that hasn't printed coming off the build plate with uh, via the medium of a spatula. And yep, it popped off really easy. And again, that build plate was easy to clean up. A good indication that your base settings are right. I didn't need to chisel it off and it didn't fall off on its own. Absolutely where we want it. 20 seconds seems to be the sweet spot. Well, let's get some of those supports off it now. Now, I find if you heat the supports up, they come off a darn sight better and leave less divots and marks. So just going to use a hairdryer on it and I'm just going to give it a good blast all over. Make sure you wear a face mask doing this. You don't want any of the heated resin fumes going down your throat. That is an inherent danger. So make sure you wear some protection. And those supports are like, uh, well, they're like butter just falling away from the model. Again, this is quite a delicate model. There's a few delicate parts on it and those supports are coming off beautifully. That little bit of heat has just made all the difference. Now, I use heat an awful lot to get my supports off. And although it doesn't give you that really satisfying snapping noise, they turn really soft and squidgy and literally just fall off. Now, yes, it has left some divots in certain places, but hey, this is resin 3D printed. You're going to get some support structure left behind. Heating them up 
does reduce that, but it doesn't get rid of them completely. And for this model, most of the divots were on the bottom of it anyway that you're really not going to see. We'll have a closer look at it, of course, and yes, there are a few little marks on it, but the supports have done a wonderful job. So once it's been cured, this is what we're left with now. There are some stains on there. I guess that's just my inadequate cleaning, so please don't think that's the resin because I've only had that happen on this print. But I think let's look past that and look how beautiful it is, the detail the finer points the little wires the little delicate parts of all printed beautifully i'm going to move on to another print now this is the wicked obi-wan kenobi print and again it's been printed on the gk2 i'm using exactly those same settings you could have dropped the settings exposure time a tad but i'm happy with three seconds and again a few hours later this has printed flawlessly there's quite a bit of detail in this model as well and it's printed absolutely gorgeously. The supports have done their job perfectly. It's held on to the build plate. Everything looking good. How well does it come off the build plate? Well, yep, you you guessed it. It comes off really, really easily. Everything came off. It's perfect. I've got no problems with these settings. These are definitely the settings that I recommend on your GK2. So 20 seconds for your bottom layer and 20 of those layers. We're having a three second exposure time, a one second rest after each print. And I'm going to use that hairdryer again to get the supports off. And as I expected, they just literally fell off off leaving virtually no marks at all now i'm going to be cleaning this in the ultra craft reflex wash station i've dropped the resolution of it down from its maximum 160 down to around about 100 i don't want it shaking around too much i have hollowed it out and i have put some holes in it so i'm going to give it a really good drain and this obi-wan kenobi model looks beautiful and i'm sure you want to see it all printed and finished don't you and here's Ewan, uh, Obi-Wan rather, all finished and uh, the detail of it is lovely. Now, of course, like any 3D print, it's going to need some sanding. It's going to need a little bit of tidying up. But my word, the detail is in there. It's wonderful. It's caught everything at the base, obviously, I've printed on PLA. But the rest of it has been printed with this X13 resin. It's been blue tacked together, so it's only a temporary fix just till I can take it apart and clean it all up. But I am really, really impressed with what I see so far using this X13 resin from Uniformation. Well, I think you'll agree with me today that this plant-based resin is absolutely fantastic stuff. I've never used anything like it before. I've always used just typical resin, lots of different kinds, but never the plant-based stuff. And this, I've got to say, has really, really impressed me. I've had some wonderful prints from it, and I love my Obi-Wan Kenobi from Wicked. And I think it's printed beautifully in this plant-based resin. If you want to get hold of some of this, there'll be a link in the description where you can get some from. If you like what you see today on the channel, then give us a subscribe. Just press that subscribe button. That's all we ask you to do. If you want to join the Patreon, you would be more than welcome. Just click that Patreon join button. It can be as little as free. Or if you want to cough up a couple of quid a month just to help me carry on doing things like this, it would be really appreciated. And thank you to my existing patrons. You guys are fantastic. Uh, above all, I think I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on this resin. Let me know in the comments below if you've had good or bad experience with it. But I can only tell you that my experience of it has been absolutely excellent. And I hope you've enjoyed watching my experience with this plant-based Uniformation resin. Thanks, Uniformation, for sending me some. And if you want to get hold of some, you know where to get it from. Stay tuned for the next episode of Greedy 3D.